Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. Hi, I was just editing this video and I realized that there's way too much I need to talk about MIDI, so I have split this episode into two. So this is going to be the first episode of this all about MIDI, and next week I will release the other one, which will be even more intense and more cooler and more a lot of cool stuff in there. Anyway, so uh, remember to subscribe and come back to that one as well. Okay, let's get into it now. In the end of the video, I also do my weekly question as usual. So I have answered one of your questions. Okay, so let's get into this video, shall we? Yes, we shall. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> What is MIDI? MIDI is instructions that we give the computer to make sound. We tell the computer where to play, what to play, how long to play it. And we can customize the sounds as we want with the virtual instruments. MIDI is just information on the computer that we can then control either using the door or using a MIDI control such as this beautiful darling here called Push2. They do not have speakers on them. They only control what's on the doors. What does MIDI stand for? M-I-D-I. <laughs> it stands for a musical instrument digital interface. Very fancy, very fun. Let's get into Ableton and just check out what MIDI is here. So we have two MIDI tracks, do do do, and we have two audio tracks. Let's just delete the audio ones because we are not here to learn about audio, we're here to learn about MIDI. Firstly, in Ableton Live we can create MIDI clips, we can create them in session view, we can create them in arrangement view, but let, let's just first look at different ways we can create MIDI clips in this beautiful session view. First, I need to go and find a MIDI instrument, so virtual instruments. So if you go to the browser window, you see that there is drums and then there's instruments here. Let's just start with adding a MIDI instrument into session view. So here, if I go to the drop down menu from the triangle, now it came up with a lot of, lot of different options here. So example, I could go and go to pianos and keys and from pianos and keys, I get my fave one, which is old school roads. So I'm going to just add, drag and drop that into a MIDI track. There's three different ways to create a clip. The first one is just double clicking any of these empty slots here or double clicking an empty area of on the grid like that and it creates a clip, an empty clip. Or here we just double click any of these and it creates a clip. What we have here now, MIDI note editor. This has a lot of functions, like a lot. So what we can do now is just randomly example, create a MIDI little MIDI tune just by double clicking on this gray air empty area here. Like that, just randomly example. And let's just listen, what kind of tune is this? So if I go here between these two windows, you have the clip editing view window, and then we have here is the device, device, device view. And you can see this is the MIDI instrument. This is an instrument rack, so you can see what's making the sound here. Yeah. Well, you can customize it, the sound from the device view of the audio effect rack. So now what we can do is the second way of creating a, a MIDI clip. So that is recording. And you can use a MIDI controller like I showed the push to, or you can just use your computer keyboard to record the MIDI notes. Now I need to make sure that on the top right corner, I have activated the MIDI keyboard logo there. And I also need to make sure that the track is record activated because when what happens when I record activate the track is that on the track, you can see that the squares on the clip slots are turning round. So they're becoming circle. And what circle represents is recording button. 
Woohoo! When I press any of these keys on my keyboard, I can actually play something into the track. So let's just activate one of these circles on the clip slots. It counts in. I play an amazing chord like that, press space to end it. And now I double click that clip that I recorded and there it is. I have just recorded that clip, okay? Another way that we can actually record in this view is using the session record button. If there's a clip that is already, something's recorded already there. So I had this random funny tune here. I want to put a one really long note under this melody. What I can do is just press the, uh, the circle button on the top again. There we go. There we go. And that's how you do it. On arrangement view, we can also record tunes here by using the arrangement record button. So that is the session record button, which is session view here. And this one view is arrangement view. So this is arrangement record button. So if I press that now, you can see that I'm now recording to this view by pressing that recording button. Otherwise, how I can create clips here, as I said, I can double click or I can select an area and right click so I can put insert MIDI clip like that. And it creates the length of a MIDI clip I have just selected. There's also a very cool trick if you want to take this MIDI clip into the session view. Sample, rename this so that you can see the difference. So ha 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 here and it's pink. Right click it and then consolidate time to a new scene. Woohoo! Click that and then we go to the session view. And what has appeared to the session view to a new scene is ha 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 ha. And the beautiful sample is there. There's also a very fun way of creating a MIDI clip. So let's say we have the instrument here. We have the old school roads. I have activated the keyboard. I have a uh, record activated the track and I'm just jamming. And I'm like, yeah, this tune is so good. But then you're like, oh, fudge. That amazing performance that I just played, I don't I don't remember it anymore. What did I just, just play? Ah, oh, no, ah, oh, panic. Haha, -ha, Ableton Live has a technique for that. Button, this is actually quite new button uh, called Capture MIDI. So if I play, I just played that amazing tune. And now I press this. So it remembers what you just recently played with using your MIDI controller or your MIDI keyboard. It brings it up as a sample. Like I love that addition because there's so many times I play something and I forgot about it. Okay, so record quantization. Quantization. Qu qu <laughs> you know, if you be watching me for a while, you know, I still struggle with that word. It's just a brain fart every single time. How do we do? Usually if we start playing and you're not really good at keeping your time, what can happen is that you start playing. Like that. And what's happened is that those so these gray lines here, they are called the grid. And what's happening here is that actually none of these notes that you just played, oh, well, I'm blaming you, but I played them. Um, they are not on time because they are not attached to the grid, which means that if they would be like this, they would be definitely on time. But because they were like this out of grid, they're not on time. So if we go to edit menu, record quantize and here we can actually select a time signature on where would you like to get them quantized to. So make quantization makes means basically putting them on time. So example, I could put a uh, quarter note quantization. Okay. I activate that from there and now I start playing. And you can see when I play, 
it already snaps them to quarter notes and now it will be definitely more on time. When you right click any of these, what you can actually do is export mini clips as well. If you're like, yes, this is the shit, this is so good. You can actually export this mini clip and use it later so we can export it. We can example save it on our desktop like that. So I could just drag and drop it from the desktop to my session, start playing it. This while I created clips using a MIDI instrument called Old School Roads. But now I wanna show you how to do that with drums. So what we can do is go to the browser window, go to the section that says drums. And from here, let's just pick a kit. Medusa kit. Yeah, let's put that. I'm dragging it here, drag and drop it. It opens it up in a drum rack. If you want to more, know more about drum rack, I just published a video called All About Drum Rack. So if you want to know more about it, you can do that. You can create samples exactly the same as you did with MIDI instruments. Uh, so I could double click and I can go to this uh, MIDI editing view. And what you can see this time is not only the piano grid on the left, which you can see on a normal instrument as like this, but you can actually see the names of the drums, which will help you so much when you're creating any kind of music. So I could just create a rhythm like this. Make sure that when you're playing with computer keyboard, sometimes you might be in a different octave than your MIDI, your drum rack is being MIDI mapped to. So if that is the case, you just need to press the Z and X on your keyboard. So what you can see is now if I press X up, the MIDI, uh, the light on the MIDI grid goes up. When I press on Z, they go lower. I need to go low enough with Z and X to find correct octaves so you can play them. Okay, so now we are in this drum rack and I want to actually create a bit of a more exciting rhythm. I want to make it a bit faster than double clicking everywhere, okay? So how I can do that is with the pen tool. So pen tool has a lot of purposes. Pen tool can be found from the top right corner like that or it's a shortcut B. Just by pressing B, you can select a pen tool. So what you can see now is the pen tool on this grid. Go here and just click sounds that I like. And example, I have a kick, snare now, and then let's put close hi-hats there like that. Okay, and let's listen how that sounds. So also what we have is note view. So what we need to here have a look is note view. And then we have an envelope view, which you can open up here. Let's have a look at here. So we have play and half tempo. So this will make them the clip to go faster or slower. The left one make things sound faster and right one will make the length go slower. So example like this. Very fast and slower, half sl slower and very slow. On the top of that, we have the notes. So these will, if you select all of the notes, you can drag them up and down in the scale. Then under there, we have reverse. So we can reverse what we have created. Then we have invert, which means that the lowest MIDI notes will go to the highest and the highest ones will go to the lowest and everything in the between will just invert. So in, it kind of inverts everything uh, Horizon, you know, vertically instead of horizontally, like that. <laughs> then we have a legato, and what legato does is that actually lengthens the notes to meet the next one, next note in line. So that is so that there's no gaps between the notes. And then we have duplicate loop, so we'll, which will uh, duplicate the length of the loop from here. So then we have the automation and modulation here. So you can see that there we can control all the different sounds separately from the kit, but also what we can do is control example, the modulation, breath, breath controller, foot pedal, uh, portamento time, data entry, all these different things, and we can modulate them using this line here. So example, I could go the MIDI control and pitch bend here, and I could just use that to make cool sounds to the drum kit.
I'm gonna do another video where I will talk more about MIDI controllers as well as external MIDI. So MIDI controls, if you go to the preferences, you can see all the MIDI controller uh, setups here as well as MIDI ports, track sync and remote. So you can control the MIDI controllers in a really, uh, interesting way using all these setups so but that is another video so hey thank you for watching and let's go into the weekly questions okay so question just one <laughs> so joseph martinez asked how did you learn everything you know just from YouTube videos. So I'm actually gonna make a full episode about education versus non-education, music production, career, should you have it, should you not have it type of video. I think everybody's journey to music is personal. Personally, I feel like I, I needed to go to university, learn these things so that I could have the confidence to actually believe that I could do it because I'm a woman and I feel like I never had any example of anyone telling me that I could do this. I really think that I got firstly the confidence from university but also uh, I've done music all my life. I'm classically trained since I was five, first with violin then music oriented school, choirs, orchestras, all that jazz till I was like 19. Then when I was 23 I went to a University of West of Scotland in Scotland to study a BA commercial music degree. I found the world of music videos and I was like, wow, so this is what it feels to press buttons that make sound. And I was like hooked after that. Although I did, I did start recording by myself uh, using a carriage band and one pound microphone from Poundland like before that degree so I was like intrigued about this world definitely before that and then I uh, I actually skipped one year for my BA and I went directly to master's in York University which was the best decision I have probably ever made for my career doing that and also starting my YouTube channel I think those two decisions were best things this far I've done for my career what the York University master's did is firstly it gave me so much confidence as a music producer, as a person just doing this. And also what they taught was not door based. So they didn't teach us how to use Ableton Live or how to do logic, how to use. So it was nothing about the doors. It was about the science of sound and how we could as music producers use the sound and science as well as we could. So example, the first course we coded a blogging in Reaper. And I was like, I'd never done maths before, but because I was forced to learn trigonometry, 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 I don't really know, I don't really know how to say it, but I learned it and that taught me more about music production than anything. And learning the science really teach me how to use the doors because your doors were very easy to use after you actually knew what you want them to do. After that I was I've been teaching a lot and uh, I've been producing a lot and those two things also have taught me so much. Especially teaching is when you actually need to explain things to other people you know you really need to know what you're talking about so then you really need to make sure that you know what you're talking about if that makes sense so that has helped me a lot with my actual production work yeah so uh, i would say that's my journey to uh learning to produce hey but then please subscribe please hit the bell icon and please come here for more because i post every single sunday and sometimes midweek when i feel like it okay see you later bye Thank you.